Edgar Wright's Hot Fuzz is one of the greatest comedy films ever made. Not only is it a brilliant send-up of classic action movies like Point Break and Bad Boys 2, and a masterwork of writing, editing, and visual humor, it is also an incredible satirical look at what happens when some people decide they know what's best for everyone and justify their actions in the name of the greater good. The greater good, precisely. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Hot Fuzz raises a question few people ever stop to seriously ask. What is the greater good? It sounds like such an intuitive idea, but it's really not that simple. In Hot Fuzz, oh, wait, there are going to be a ton of spoilers ahead, so consider yourself warned. In Hot Fuzz, the central conflict is between London Police Sergeant Nicholas Angel and the meddlesome busybodies who control a sleepy country village. Angel is the kind of by-the-book police officer that even people skeptical of the cops would like. He's smart, cool under pressure, and extremely competent. But the fact is, you've been making us all look bad. I'm sorry, sir? For Angel, what starts as a demotion to a boring new job in the middle of nowhere immediately takes a turn for the weird. Although Sanford appears to be crime-free and continually wins the Village of the Year award, there's something just off about the whole place. Lock me up. I'm sorry? I'm a slasher, and I must be stopped. You're a what? A slasher of prices. Yet, when mysterious accidents start happening to the people in town, nobody but Sergeant Angel is particularly concerned. Stand back, stand back. There's been a terrible accident. Oh, just an accident. As Sanford's idyllic veneer falls away, Angel starts putting the pieces together. Now look, I, I know what you're thinking. What does any of this have to do with the greater good? Everything. See, the twist is that instead of preventing crime, the Neighborhood Watch Alliance has just been killing people for decades in order to keep Sanford the way they want it to be, defending their actions by claiming it's all for, yeah, the greater good. You should be ashamed. Calling yourself a community that cares. Oh, but we do care, Nicholas. It's all about the greater good. The greater good. How can this be for the greater good? The greater good. It's easy to see the absurdity of murdering people in the name for the greater good in a movie like Hot Fuzz, because the framing is ridiculous. You see, as much as I enjoyed your wild theory, Sergeant, the truth is far less complex. Blower's fate was simply the result of his being an appalling actor. <laughs> Oh, you murdered him for that? Well, he murdered Bill Shakespeare. What? Martin was less concerned with the reputation of the village than he was with his sordid affair with Eve Drake. And so Eve deserved to die too? Oh, she did have a very annoying laugh. <laughs> annoying. And, and George Merchant? He had an awful house. Oh. We begged him in vain to make his residence more in keeping with the village's rustic aesthetic. Wait, and, and what about Tim Messenger? What was his crime? Tim Messenger's tenure as editor of the Sanford Citizen has been unbearable. How can this be for the greater good? The greater good. Shut it! These people died for no reason, no reason whatsoever! The truth is, people have rationalized all kinds of insane things for the same reasons forever. And I'm not just talking about the sort of universally horrifying examples like what you see in communist countries where the government strips away people's property or forces them into labor camps all for the supposed benefit of society. There are actually plenty of major examples in the US, like the early progressive support for eugenics and forced sterilization or the conservative backlash against interracial and gay marriage. And going back farther, most of the worst parts of our history slavery and segregation, the Trail of Tears, Japanese internment during World War II, all came with the same justification. Yeah, the way we see it, it's all for the greater good. The greater good. And there's a ton of laws still on the books designed to shape society for the greater good. Public dress codes, free speech zones, the FCC's censorship of TV and radio, the Washington Wives, prostitution laws, restrictions on homeschooling and private schools, the war on drugs, eminent domain, civil asset forfeiture, even the stuff most people think is not that bad, like occupational licensing, zoning restrictions, or anti-smoking laws are based in the same kind of utilitarian thinking. 
At the core of all of this is the idea that individual people's interests and values just aren't that important. And really, what we should learn from this is that as positive and well-meaning as the whole thing seems, more often than not, the greater good isn't a reflection of what's best for everyone, but of what's best for the people in power. You'll find that we run a very tight ship here. And as long as people don't think about it too much or fight back, it all kind of works out. But it breaks down pretty quickly when someone challenges the status quo. No society is going to be perfect, and of course, different communities will probably always set some rules on what people can do, but perhaps we should at least start with the presumption that everyone should be free to live their lives however they want, instead of forcing society to fit our own personal preferences. A single greater good for everyone might be a myth, but the good for individual people that comes from tolerating a diverse society where everyone can pursue their own interests without fear of fines, jail, or being killed, that isn't. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Out of Frame. If you want to see more video essays like this that talk about art, culture, and cool ideas, subscribe to this channel and check us out as at Be Online on all the social media.